Hey guys, I'm going to continue on with this amplifier build. This is the discrete output stage I was working on in the last video. If you haven't seen that, you might want to watch that video first because this is kind of a continuation on to that. Well, in the first video I was uh, playing around with the output and looking at biasing. I need to come up with a better biasing solution here for the output stage. And I'll uh, take a look at a current source. Now I'm not saying I'll actually use that, but you know, like I said, I'm just kind of cobbling this thing together with parts that I have in my bins and laying out on the bench here. See if I can get an actual discrete amplifier circuit up and running. It's not going to be an audiophile amplifier. It may not even work right. You know, just a lot of things I have to do to make it, you know, function correctly. I like to say that up front, I'm not an expert. I'm not a electronic engineer, and I'm not really experienced in building a complete amplifier. But I do know things about electronics, and these are just small building blocks of a bigger unit. So using my knowledge there, I think I could come up with something. So, you know, it's not going to be a perfect audiophile amplifier. You may not want to build it, and we'll just work through it and get something that works pretty good, at least. Today we're going to talk about a constant current regulator. You see this a lot in various electronic circuits, including the little uh, amplifier project I'm working on. But before we get into the actual circuit here, let's talk about how current can change in a circuit. We'll just have a simple series circuit with two red LEDs and a 1K resistor. And red LEDs, we'll just say, you know, they have about 2 volt drop, make it easy to calculate, and a 1K resistor. Now you want to think a circuit as a potential ladder. Each point between the components being a rung on the ladder. So as you go up, you start at zero and you go up through the increasing electrical uh, voltage potential till you get to the supply voltage. And using that you can uh, you know, find the voltage across this resistor and calculate the current. So let's say we have our two red LEDs in our resistor. We're applying 12 volts as the at the point up here as our supply voltage. And I want to know the current. Well, you just go down the ladder rung by rung, subtracting the voltages. In other words, the voltage drop across each component. So each LED is 2 volt drop. So 12 minus 2 minus 2 is 8. So at this point right here, we have an 8 volt potential. And we know 8 volts across a 1K resistor, we could just use Ohm's law and calculate that. So it's volts divided by resistance to give us current. And we end up with 8 milliamps. So let's say... Um, I put a jumper across and short this LED out. So it's not really part of the circuit anymore. So we can skip over it. So we're changing our load here. So if we take our 12 volts and then we skip over that one and we subtract 2, then we know we have 10 volts and you know 10 milliamps across our resistor so the current increased. So another way to think about it is uh, if we increase the supply voltage. So I erase that that jumper across that LED. So let's say we put 16 volts supply here. Now we take 16 minus 2 and minus 2 again we end up with 12 volts and we know we'll 
we end up with 12 milliamps on that or through the circuit. So, you know, changing the load and or the supply voltage will change the current through the circuit. So if we put a constant current regulator in here, we can keep the current through our load constant if the supply voltage or the load itself changes. So how does this thing work? Well, you have your biasing resistor here which sends some current down through our voltage reference, in this case a Zener diode, so it, you know the Zener's conducting in reverse and setting its Zener voltage. And some of that current's going to divert through the base emitter junction and turn this transistor on. Well, okay, so it turns it on, it's conducting a certain amount of current. How does it regulate that current? Well, pretty neat how that works. Let's say, for example, that the resistance of our load decreases. Well, when that happens, you're drawing more current. So that current's going to flow through the load transistor and the emitter resistor. And what happens when you increase the current in a resistor? The voltage drop across that resistor goes up. Now, if you remember, this diagram here where I was saying that it's a ladder of potentials. Same thing here. You have a ladder of potentials along the circuit going from zero up to the supply. Well, this transistor is sitting atop this uh, resistor on the ladder. And, you know, the base is really part of the circuit. So, you know, this base emitter junction voltage sitting up here is going to increase relative to ground. And when it increases, because we have a steady voltage here, it's going to cause less current to flow through the base. What happens then is less current means the transistor conducts less. So it counters that current and it goes right back to what it was. And the converse is true as well. If the resistance here went higher, less current flows, less current across the resistor, the voltage drops here, you get a dropping voltage, and because it's dropping relative to our reference, more current's going to shunt through the base emitter junction, turning the transistor on more. This is going to conduct, the transistor is going to conduct more, and you know, you, this is going to increase the voltage drop here, encounter the uh, reduced current, and it goes right back to what it was. It's kind of beauty in the simplicity of the way these things work. I have a current regulator circuit set up here on the breadboard. I'm monitoring the collector current with a meter here. And it's pretty easy to calculate the current that the circuit will produce. Well, you just take your the voltage at this point, so that'd be our Zener voltage, and you subtract the uh, voltage drop here, and then you just apply Ohm's law using the value of this resistor. And that's what the uh, the current ends up being. So I'm using a green LED, which is going to be around 2 volts. And you subtract 2 volts from the uh, 0.7 or whatever it is. And you get 1.2 volt, or yeah, 1.3 or so volts, actually. And because I have a 1K resistor in the emitter, you get 1.3 milliamps, roughly. I mean, it's not exactly perfect. And let's see how this varies as I adjust my power supply voltage. Now, it will go up because an LED 
Now it's not a perfect voltage reference. As you increase the current, the voltage drop across it will increase. But I'm adjusting this quite a bit. I mean, I'm going from you know, around 5 volts all the way up to 15. And while it does vary, I mean, we're just talking a few hundredths of a milliamp. So it is working pretty well. And another thing I can do is I can short out to these uh, two LEDs. Hang on a second. I'm going to get that right on there. Well, I got one shorted out. See, one of them's off. So that changes the load, and the current didn't really change. I'll take that off. Now they're both on, but the current didn't change at all. So pretty neat. That's how that works. Okay, talk about another type of current source, and that's called the current mirror. I have a quick and dirty sketch drawn up here for you of a current mirror circuit. Pretty neat the way these work. Well, on this side you have a resistor, and it, you know, it could be anything really, a varying load, a, a transistor with a varying conduction. But just to make it simple, we'll just say this is a resistor. And it's set for 10 milliamps. So 10 milliamps is going to conduct through this side. And we have a transistor. And the notice the collector and base are tied together. So you're, you're really just left with a diode junction. And in fact, sometimes they just use a diode here. But because you want the current to match closely in this side, they use the same type of transistor and try to match them up. So as current flows through this side, let's say you're running like uh, 0.69 volts. So you use the exact same transistor type that's matched up and you get 0.69 volts of drop through this base emitter junction. So that turns on this transistor the exact same amount and the same 10 milliamps is going to flow through the circuit even if this resistor you know varies or whatever the load is so essentially that's how it works it's again that's uh, beauty and simplicity here now these things can look different they can vary they can have more components to make them perform better but you know this is just a basic current mirror Okay, what am I going to do here then? Well, this video is getting long, so it will end up being in the next part, but I'm, I think I'm going to take out these diodes and replace it with a, a what's called a servo, which is just a transistor and some resistors and uh, a potentiometer to allow me to adjust the current flowing through here. But, you know, that's not really a current source because, you know, it's not really regulated anyway. Now, either here or here, I'll replace the resistor with a Class A amplifier driver. It's just another transistor. And, um, you know, it's going to be biased. You know, of course, it's Class A, so it's turned on about halfway. And... Uh, that will control some of the current and I might put a current source in on one of the other sides to improve the performance or I can just leave a, uh, a resistor in there it's just gonna take some playing so yeah uh, videos get long uh, when I come back we will continue on with the amplifier but had to get what I thought were some important things out of the way and discuss uh, the current source. 
Well, thanks a lot for watching and catch you on the next video.